Happy New Year, guys! It's Erica with Not Your Average EDC, and today we have another episode for the EDC knife series that I do. This will be on the TRM, which is Three Rivers Manufacturing, Neutron. This is a knife that I have not had in my collection very long. Um, this is a recent acquisition that I got from a friend, and I did use it a little bit, enough to get some like first impressions on it, so I figured I would add it to the collection of videos that I do. Let's get into it. All right, so this is the Neutron. They make an Atom, which is this knife but larger, and then there's like a little tiny nugget one that um, I don't recall the name of, but it's much smaller than this, and I don't think it has a thumb stud. So this is the Neutron. It is a kind of like a normal sized EDC knife. We're gonna bring the bug out into frame for size reference. Everyone knows the bug out, so I think that'll help. And also let's bring the pair of three into frame, another one that people know very well. So you can kind of get an idea of the size there. It's um, a nice normal sized EDC knife. Um, maybe on the smaller side for some people. And like I said, there's a larger version if you have big hands, but this is a, a nice sized knife here. Um, on this one in particular, we have micarta handle scales, a 20 CV blade that is extremely slicey. Um, I will show you that now. I mean, this is like wildly thin. A nice deep carry pocket clip. Got some little liners in there, a um, couple of barrel spacers, just kind of like a lightweight, typical EDC knife. Um, oh, let me show you the, the 20 CV there. There we go. Some nice engraving there to tell you what is up in the world. And on this one, I do have some little tiny like silicone O-rings. However, they did not come with the knife. Uh, they don't in general, and I believe that you have to purchase them separately. So that's kind of just an overview of how it's built. Uh, let's talk about some pros about this knife. So this is this is not a review. My reviews um, are only done after I've carried a knife consecutively for a month. So this is kind of a first impressions uh, after I had used it for, I think it was like, three or four days at work and I was using it a lot. So uh, first impressions after using it a decent amount for a few days. So pros would be this blade is the sharpest and the sliciest I have. It is nice and thin, so it allows you to go through materials with ease. You have a really sharp point there. And the edge is like terrifying. Um, I got this secondhand from a friend, but I don't think she used it. So it, you know, came with the factory edge here. Uh, like it's like a laser. I mean, it really is sharp as shit here. <laughs> um, and this geometry is the type that would allow you to continue cutting even when you dull your edge. So a lot of people don't realize this, but geometry is what cuts. Um, sharp edges only last so long. Geometry is what will bring you to the finish line. So when you have a long, wide blade, so I'm talking wide in this portion, a long, wide blade that is thin and ground like this, this geometry allows you to cut forever. Uh, and even when you dull your edge bevel here, you will still be able to do some normal cutting with this knife because it is so thin and slicey. It will still allow you to go through materials even when the edge is giving a little bit of resistance. As long as you can make it past that dull edge resistance into the thin slicey blade, you should still be able to do some decent cutting until you are able to throw this on the strop or on the stones if need be, which is really nice. So if you're somebody that doesn't have time necessarily uh, or patience to sharpen super often, this would be a great blade shape for you because it keeps cutting even when the edge is dull. 
That is a piece of orange stuck in there, I'm pretty sure. I am so sorry if that's irritating you, it's stuck. Um, another pro would be the construction. So this is something I have never seen before. You can take these two Torx screws out, and um, I think you have to take the pivot out too. But you can just take those off and swap the scales out without having to do like a whole disassembly. It's like the simplest thing I've ever seen. So underneath the scales, you have more screws that are holding the knife together and such. But if you are into kind of like modding your knives and changing scales out often, this is like the easiest ever because you don't have to take the whole knife apart and deal with annoying shit. Like you can literally just take those off, swap your scales out, put the new ones on, good to go. Uh, the actual deconstruction takes place underneath the hood. So that's super cool. I really enjoy that ease. Um, also disassembly in general to like maintain, you know, blade oil, stuff like that is easy. I've already taken this apart to oil it and stuff once and it was incredibly easy. Went together just as nicely as it came apart. This clip placement is superior to a lot. You don't have like anything sticking out here. I really like too that the like shape of this clip kind of matches the butt end of the knife so it just all you know goes together really nicely. Um, decent retention you know not crazy but decent. If you don't like your pants being ripped up this is probably good for you. And this micarta is really nice. I, I enjoy how tightly woven it is. It's just like very nice quality micarta. And just kind of the overall shape is pretty neat. I've never really had a knife in this shape before, but if you couldn't tell before, um, just the shape of the handle kind of molds into your hand. So you have like a little bit of a hump here. It comes in on this side and it kind of just is one of those knives that like wants to melt into your hand. Um, it is shaped to melt into your hand. But moving into the cons, just because it looks like it would melt does not mean it actually will. And it doesn't. Uh, fuck these edges. <laughs> like, what were you thinking, TRM? These are sharp. Like, what? Are these even finished? Did you guys even complete these scales? I can't tell because it doesn't feel like they were completed. Like, cool. Um, there's some edging here. Like, it looks like you started to round them off, but then maybe didn't because it is like can you see how sharp those are that angle this is like 90 degrees bro I don't even understand it's not comfortable at all those are like really sharp it's like a square it is not comfortable at all like you grip this and it's like sharp I'm trying to like see if I can get like the hot spots on camera like if I if I hold it like this, literally all within here, yeah, you could kind of see it there for a second. It, like, hurts, guys. It doesn't feel good. Um, super sharp handle edges. Not fun. A, another con that kind of gives me the creeps is, like, that liner. Like, I understand that this is a super light use knife, not hard use at all, but, like, I don't know. That liner looks like it doesn't have the longest life. Like, it is literally almost the same thickness as the actual blade. I don't know. That just looks flimsy to me. It just, it just feels and looks flimsy and is kind of, like, sus to me. I don't know. Um, Super, super thin. I can't necessarily say that's a con because, like, this is not made for hard use. Uh, it's made for light tasks, so I'm not going to, like, crap on how thin and, like, literally paper thin this is. Um, I, I would not trust it to do much other than cutting, like, packages and, and boxes and plastic wrap and um, maybe some very light bailing twine or something, but, um, really nothing further I, that would make me a little uncomfortable just because how thin it is. But another con, in my opinion, is, like, w 
these rings, why aren't you including them with the knife if you need them to open the knife? So I mentioned earlier, these didn't come with the knife. So I got it sent to me without, and it I couldn't even get the knife open in a comfortable manner without these because you have no purchase. Like they're tiny little studs that are super uncomfortable, and I couldn't even like get any purchase on them. There's no milling, there's no grooves, there's nothing, so your fingers just slide off until you have these rubbery rings, which you have to buy separate. Why aren't you putting them on in the first place if you need them to open the knife? Uh, that's weird. Price point is frustrating. These, I think, were like at $200. Um, the new ones I have heard are 300 or something like that. Um, $200 for an American-made knife that that isn't centered. Um annoying especially because they're not like a massive company like I've gone over this before but if you are a smaller like family run company um I am expecting you to take the time to send out the knives correctly and this did come off center to uh the original owner so this is not off center from use this this was sent like this to my friend Cheyenne before she sold it to me um yeah, quality control with this company, not good at all. Um, they are pumping out knives constantly, and they are they are not good on quality control. Um, and I am speaking from many cases that I have researched, so that's definitely a con for me. Um, not worth 200 I would put this at 130 with that centering being off, um, with the deployment being an issue straight out of the box. And also, the retention not super nice on this at all. Like if you're someone that needs your knife to be locked into your pocket, if you're like a worker that that needs their tools to stay in their pocket um, when you're moving around on the job, that I wouldn't totally trust this. I feel like it could be pushed out of your pocket very easily. And I have kind of tested that. I put it in my jeans pocket and just kind of bent around, bent my bent my legs and I was trying to see if like my leg from the inside of my pants would kind of like push this up and it does it definitely starts to wiggle its way and ride out of your pocket. Um, so I can't necessarily like recommend this yet because I haven't gotten enough use. And also, like I said, I'm just a little sus about some things. This is a knife that I need to put a lot of time and effort into researching and using until I can say much further about it. But these are just my first impressions. I think this company has a lot going for them. I think there's a lot that there's a lot of potential here. Okay. They're great people from what I've heard. There's a lot of potential, but being a nice person doesn't make you, uh, put out nice knives. You know what I'm saying? Like, cool. I'm glad that you have, um, a good personality and you're a very kind person, but your knives are not going to be kind to people if they're do, if they're giving hot spots, if they're falling out of pockets, if they're not centered from the get go. Um, those types of issues are issues that I would expect from big, big companies with thousands of employees. I do expect a Benchmade to come off center to me. I do expect a Spyderco to come off center to me. They are pumping out knives like Italians make babies. It's, it is insane. These guys are not. So like, let's tighten up the quality control a little bit. Let's get those knives centered before you're sending them out. People will appreciate it a lot. Um, let's just quickly talk about best use and sharpening before we end this. So um, best use would be, like I said earlier, very light duty tasks, very light duty. Tape cutting, paper cutting, cardboard boxes, which I have shown um, on the channel, it shreds cardboard. Light, light twine, light roping, um, light food prep on a cutting board. And I say that because like this edge is so thin, it will blunt very easily. Um, just very light tasks, guys, very light. Don't push it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust that. Um, but if you're just an average person doing average things, this will be enjoyable for you. It's also just like insanely lightweight. Um, I, I would not recommend this for my usual blue collar stuff. No farming, no mechanics, no 
pushing and prying and cuckoo stuff, just very light tasks with this. And sharpening, I haven't needed to sharpen it yet. However, 20 CV is not terrible to sharpen. And this blade shape and geometry and thinness should, should be very easy to maintain. Um, when you have a blade that thin, room for error is pretty minimal because you don't have um, a lot of like thickness behind the edge where you can accidentally roll around on a sharpening stone. So like it's so thin, it's kind of going to place itself nice and flat on your sharpening stone or strop and stay there because there's there's nowhere else to really move. Like there's nothing to this blade. So that's good. And um, when you don't have like a recurve or a tanto or any crazy stuff happening, when you have just a nice straight edge for the most part that just very ever so slightly tapers, again, very easy to sharpen that, that blade shape because you really don't have to move much. And that's when people start to mess up with sharpening and stropping is when they have to move. As long as you can hold something pretty straight and, and you know, work away on your strop or work toward you very straight, hold that wrist tight on a sharpening stone, that's when you don't mess up. And this is a fantastic shape for sharpening if you're starting off because there's no room for error. This is basically a straight line. Also, the finish on this is really nice. It's like a nice stone wash. It's beautiful. So those are just some first impressions on this thing. Like I said, this knife intrigues me and I have a lot of um, trial and error to go through with this before I can say much more about it. But first impressions are not bad, but not good. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, let's start a conversation about this down in the comments. There's tons of people with these. Let me know your um, kind of like situation with your TRM knife. Is yours centered? Is it not? Did you send it in for service? How much did you pay for it? Let's talk about it down in the comments and get some conversation going about this one because I am very curious about this thing. It's a little sus to me. So um, hopefully you guys have a great day. Happy New Year's. Go use your shit and go enjoy your life, guys. And buy knives. Have a good one. See you on the next video.